myself personally, I think um, you know it was a, it was a, it was a great experience, um, personal growth, um, working with a, a, a great group of guys. Um, I think the front office working with Sam has been been terrific. I really enjoyed the the evolution of our team from you know the start of training camp and how we evolved and got better and um, these guys' commitment to to working hard every single day and, and trying to get better and improve. Um, I thought we came together as a team. I thought we got better as the year went on. Um, and then obviously um, to see so many guys play well late certainly I think gives 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 me great hope and optimism, you know, going forward. Really? I'm sorry. You don't often see teams as close as like yours did in the playoffs. Sometimes they elevate play, but just to yep. see guys improve. What do you chop that up to as you think back about this last four to six weeks? Well, I think it's human nature, but you know, coming out of the All Star break, um, you know, we we obviously struggled and we played against really really good teams, and they were coming very very quickly. And I felt like, and I said this at the time, I felt like our team needed to go through that in order to find what we needed to do to reach our fullest potential. I think the thing that got lost and nobody talked about, you know, in, in the playoffs was Dallas was really injured and they made it very, very physical um, and we were really challenged. Then we had a chance to play 13 straight games against two teams that set historical marks in the, in the history of the NBA. When you play that level of competition, you can't help but get better and improve. And I always felt like the harder it was for our team because they're resilient, because they're, they're, they're competitive, because they work hard, when you play against that level, it forces you to raise your level. So for us, the, the last 13 playoff games were clearly against two of the greatest teams of all time in this league. Billy, you said the other night that what you're most excited about is the, the kind of sustaining the habits that you guys were able to build over the course of the season. Can you kind of lay out some of the, the characteristics of your team that you saw develop and grow that you want to kind of initiate again in training camp coming up? The, I, I really felt like as we we're going through, and again, this being my first year, me getting to know the players, the players getting to know me, there's a transition, there's an adjustment period, but... Um, the way these guys were open-minded all year long to want to get better, to try to improve, to work, was really good. Um, we, we, we've got an opportunity to utilize what happened here this season and transfer it into next year. But we got to utilize it in the correct fashion in order for us to grow and develop. And I think it, what, the first thing you have to do is you have to have a, a, a high sense of humility in terms of really looking at it for what it was and how do we improve and how do we grow and how do we get better from this. Um, and then being able to come back next year and take the things that helped us evolve into a team that was playing very well at the end of the year and try to pick up from that point and try to continually grow and evolve again. Billy, are you, is it going to feel like you're back in college when you sit down with Kevin, having to recruit a guy? Yeah, I don't think I'll be recruiting him. I don't. I don't look at it as recruiting. You know, for 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 me, you know, it's been over a hundred games with Kevin. Um, you know, obviously for him, uh, in this decision, it will be his decision. I'm there in any way he needs. Um, but I think when you've been with somebody for an, basically an entire year, and it was a year ago at this point in time when he was coming off his foot injury that we had a chance to spend a lot of time. So, you know. Kevin will will go through this process, and I'm going to respect his you know his wishes of you know taking his time and evaluating it and and making the right decision for himself. What would your pitch be? Excuse me. What would your pitch be? I'm not going to get. I don't have no. I have nothing to do with this. This is Kevin's decision. I don't think it's about me posing a pitch. Kevin's very bright. He obviously has had an incredible impact on this community in this organization and obviously the the organization the community love him a great deal as well you know this is about kevin um and if he needed anything from me i would be there to talk to him about anything but this is about what what kevin wants to do and it's his decision do you have he's been really good about not not really even addressing it he, is he that way inside the doors 
I mean, do you have any clue at all what he's going to do? I don't, and I will say this. As a coach, and this being my first time going through this, I could not be more impressed with the way he handled this year because not, it wasn't necessarily about Kevin. Kevin's a very humble guy. It wasn't necessarily that Kevin was going to draw lighter attention to it, but everywhere we want, pe- everywhere we went, people wanted to talk about it, and he never allowed it to get into the team. And I really, really respected that and admired that he put the team first, and Kevin made an enormous amount of sacrifices this year to to try to help our team get better. You know, from being accustomed to playing the entire first quarter to then being okay coming out with six minutes to trying to do different things on on the offensive uh, defensive end of the floor. I mean. He, he was terrific. So he allowed, by just putting all his focus on the team, he allowed us to improve and get better. And it was never, ever a, 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 a challenge of having to deal with all that stuff. What did you learn about Kevin Durant in this 100 games, this one year, that you didn't know? I mean, you knew a lot about him when you got here. What did you learn about him? Um, great work ethic. I think deep down inside, he's got a lot of composure and poise. Um, I think he's continuing to evolve as a leader. I think leadership for him is very important, and I think he is a great leader and wants to keep getting and growing um, in that uh, area um, of his game, you know, in terms of lifting people up around him. Um, I thought coming down the stretch of the playoffs, his um, the way he verbalized to the guys and communicated with the guys was really terrific. Um, and I think the other thing, too, is on a personal level, just who he is as a human being. I have great, great respect and admiration for who he is as a man. How is the uh, Golden State going to be in the running for the next few years? What do you think this team needs to do to be able to get over that hump that it wasn't able to do the, the last three games of the series? I, I don't necessarily look at it that way. I look at it as the next year is next year. It's a totally different year. We'll have to start over again. There's a process that we have to go through. I think the experiences that Dion got and Ennis got and Steven got and Andre Robertson got, and even though Cameron didn't play a lot uh, in the playoffs, he got a chance to, to play during the season. I think our young guys, I'm excited and optimistic about their growth and their development. So we need to keep getting better. We need to keep improving. Um, and hopeful, I'm hopeful that the experiences that we went through here uh, in these playoffs will give us an opportunity starting next year to build off of that. What's going, to be your, what's going to be your process in regard to the lead assistant position? And have you gleaned anything from Monty in terms of where he stands? Well, Monty's not going to come back. Um, uh, my feeling right now, I mentioned this, someone was asked, the, the most important thing to me is staff chemistry. And I've said this before, that if you're going to try to build a team and you want your team to be cohesive and have really, really good chemistry, then it starts with the coaching staff. I think you got to be able to model that. So for me, <clears throat> I want to first and fi- first and foremost find somebody, and it could be someone inside of the own organization. It may be someone from the outside. Certainly I'll sit down with Sam and we'll talk about it. But the chemistry part of it's the most important thing to me. Um, you know, I, I'm at this level. There, there's plenty of really, really good, competent coaches, X and O wise. But to me, it's so much deeper than that because if you don't have good staff chemistry, the length of the season, it's 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 too hard. We, we've that's got to be the first part. It's got to be someone that really fits in. When do you start that? When do you start contacting people? Or, or has that um, yeah, I mean, I'll probably start to sit down. I mean, obviously, just getting back in yesterday, I haven't had a chance. That's certainly something on my plate that I've got to deal with. Um, but I'll start to, to evaluate that and, you know, talk to Mo and talk to Mark Bryant, Darko and guys on our staff and really try to find, you know, figure out what we need to help us grow and help us get better as well. Billy, the, the playoffs can be a chess match <clears throat> in terms of move, counter move, a lot of adjustments that go on in the series. It seemed like you enjoyed that aspect of the experience you had diving in that way. Is that accurate? I mean, did you enjoy that? I, you know, I, I, I did enjoy it. The, the, the thing that I think was fascinating for me as a coach was, like, I think there's, you know, you, you, you get into a series and how can I find ways? Like, so for example, like this last series, you know, it was hard for Ennis matchup wise in certain situations, but like, instead of just shelving him and saying, okay, he just can't play in the series. That's like easy. How do I find out and figure out ways to get him in there where he can make a little bit of an impact? Now, the last two games, game six and seven, it wasn't like he played big minutes, but we put him in position where, you know what, his eight or 10 points, that helps. I think the same thing is could be said about Andre in, in early in the series against, 
you know, against Golden State. It was like, well, they're not playing them, and you got you got to take them out and play somebody else. Well, how can I generate and put Andre in position where he can be effective? I enjoyed that. That to me, because I, I feel like as a coach, you try to put your personnel in the best situation to take advantage of, you know, how teams are guarding them and what may be available. And from game to game, that's going to change. But I think that's the part of uh, you get an opportunity to grow and you get a chance to think about the game on a different level. To follow up on that, I know it's early, but would a goal with you for Andre to be to continue to, to work with him as kind of that small ball 5-4 and you know, his, his passing and ball handling in, in those situations? Well, that's a great point because I thought going into the year that we had flexibility roster-wise with stuff, but there was a lot of different lineups that were really played, you know, coming down the stretch. Obviously, you had Steven Ennis got a chance to play quite a bit together. Um, we got into, as you mentioned, Andre playing with Serge and almost being a center at, at times. We played conventional lineup as well. We played Steven with basically, you know, four guards. So there's a lot of different things I think we can look at, you know, going into next year that evolved and happened this season that, um, you know, because of the roster and its flexibility allowed us to do some different things. I just don't look at it like getting over the hump. I've never viewed it that way. This is a process for our team to continue to evolve and get better. Uh, we need to improve. Um, I think going into the last two playoff series against San Antonio and against Golden State, everybody would agree that what those two teams did were was, was historic. So we competed very well against both those teams. It's not about getting over the hump. It's about can we improve and get better and be better next year than we were this year? That, that, that's the biggest challenge. You say it's very <laughs> well, I felt like coming out of um, games uh, three and four, obviously being up, um, you get into a situations against teams that have won championships that understand how to go a little bit deeper in terms of trying to take it to another level. And we got a chance to be a part of that with Golden State. And if you look at those games where we were able to win, the rebounding margin was huge. You look at the last several games, the rebounding margin wasn't as, as great as it normally was. That, to me, was more of those guys really taking it to a different level. I thought the series forced our guys to dig down deeper. I think we can dig down even deeper. And we can be, the more you get challenged and pushed like that, I think the more you have a chance to grow and flower. So that's what it's to me. It's, it's, it's going through where, you know, in order to evolve into the best you can be, you have to endure. And sometimes the endurance of going through painful losses and struggles and those kind of things, that, that endurance allows you to evolve into maybe, as we talked about, getting over the hump or the next step. It's, it, that's what you got to do. You got to endure this to take another step. And, and I think can we come back next year with the mindset, OK, we got to start over again in this process of trying to you know, build back up. But I'm very optimistic about these guys. We saw a lot of ups and downs in the regular season. Yeah. It was more of an up trajectory in the playoffs. Is this a group that can do that trajectory throughout the season? And that may be one of the things that will come out of the growth of these playoffs? Um, you know, probably with me being new um, this season, you know, if you were to draw a line of progression, it probably was, you know, up, down, up, down, you know, and that's the way it normally goes. I don't think it's ever just – smooth sailing all the way up. I mean, like, listen, even in the playoffs, I mean, the game one against San Antonio, we lost by 30. You know, we, we played pretty well against um, uh, Golden State in game one and find a way to win the game. We come back in game two and we get, you know, blown out. So you're going to have those moments. Um, but the trajectory of our team is sometimes you've got to take some steps down before you can go back up. And I think that happened. But, again, for me, being new and going through this with these guys and us getting to know each other and during that process, I think that always takes some time. Bill, anything that kind of surprised you about the pro game coming from college that maybe you weren't expecting this year? No, not really. Um, 
you know, the, 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 the hardest part or the most challenging part was to try to develop and build relationships with these guys in a short period of time and try to get to know them. Um, and obviously, I've said this from the uh, very, very beginning, is, you know, how do I create an opportunity for them to be efficient and effective both individually and collectively as a team? You know, and you, you get a chance to learn guys' habits and, you know, what they're like in pressure situations. I, you know, that was a process to, to be able to go through that. I think the game part of it, um, just having a chance in the off season to watch so much film, that probably was really, really helpful to me. Um, but I, I felt like because of the preparation of the people here with me, I felt like I was really, really prepared when the season started. Um, and the biggest thing for me was going to have to be getting to know the players and tinkering with different lineups and trying different things and taking some – some risks line up match up just just to get a feel of our team because you can watch it on film but when you start coaching them you got to kind of get a feel for yourself as well russell's first team all nba arguably his best season where did you see him improve most from the beginning to the end i just believe russell will do whatever he can do to help the team win um you know again last year at this point in time i was being asked questions about russell that um, he was the scoring champion, Kevin was coming back, could these guys exist, all this other stuff. And just talking to Russell, you know, and not knowing him a year ago at this point in time, I never got that sense from him. Um, he played with Kevin, obviously, a good, you know, his whole entire career, so he knows what Kevin can do. Um, I thought Russell was really, really well balanced. You know, he obviously averaged a lot of assists. He, um, you know, the triple doubles, the rebounding, everything, he, he was – he played. He played a. Uh, he had a great, great year all the way around, um, and I think Russell is a player that will do what is ever asked for him to do to put his team in the best position to win. Talked about during the season, we talked about um, you putting guys in positions that they're not, not used to doing certain things, particularly your big men. I mean, how did you see that bear fruit, and did you see that in particular players? Like, how did you see that? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I saw Serge get better handling the basketball. You know, Ennis Canner being able to stretch his range and shoot three-point shots. Um, to see Steven, the way he evolved in terms of rolling to the basket and, and he and Russell connecting on a lot of lob dunks. Um, his post-up game had gotten better. Um, I thought his transferring of the ball from one side of the floor was, was very, very good. Um, you know, our big guys really got better, and obviously Serge has been here for a while, has been a key component to the team. But I think when you look at Ennis and you look at Steven, those guys being relatively young, um, it was good to see them evolve the way they did. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. I appreciate everybody this year. You guys were great this year to work with, so thank you. Thanks, Coach.